Hello everybody and welcome to the final episode for Chaos 5 Trials in Dungeons Defenders 2. Now uh, today we'll be doing the final map of uh, Chaos 5 which is uh, Buried Bastille uh, which is basically Glitterhaven Caverns from Dungeons Defenders 1 and this is a big map <laughs> all right I mean it's I think it's the map with the most uh, defenses units you can build and with the most mana right off the start so mana and units shouldn't be an issue in this level uh, again I'm mainly using uh, BDTs and flamethrowers to help me take down the mobs and bosses and Sky guards for flying enemies and uh, and assassins. Uh, now, because of of the excess of defense units on this map, I tend to overkill <laughs> its its uh, lane with uh, defenses, just because I have the defense units to do it. So why not? Uh, I mean, you could probably go through a different path and just uh, you know upgrade everything with fewer defenses but I mean you, you have the units to do it so why not um, now those of you who remember in DD1 this this lane <laughs> used to spawn many bosses so uh, I used to overbuild this but they do not spawn anymore here so fewer defenses and if you tighten down the the path they can go it shouldn't present more more trouble for you so it should be enough and I like to jump in the void <laughs> apparently so uh, yes so it, it's you shouldn't have a problem with it uh, in in most lanes I find that two PDTs and three or four um, flamethrowers do the job and you don't need any more for it um, no you, you should I mean having that that many more defense units to build does make it a bit easier of course you do have more enemies spawning but also more more lanes so it is kind of divided there and equally distributed but but still um, I would say that this probably could be a good map to to start Chaos 5 along with uh, Dragonfall Sewers. Probably those those are the two maps that you are going to be able to complete first. Uh, Dragonfall Sewers for being an easier map in my opinion and this one because you, you can have so many more defense units. Uh, now you see me building those two flamethrowers in front maybe you can also place them right in the back at the front of the entrance as I placed the previous two flamethrowers maybe it's better there because if a siege roller spawns uh, it, I mean two should be enough but they will help it a bit more with uh, the extra power firing it from the back now again you want to to make sure your walls are tight and don't give any gaps uh, between them because you have lady orcs in chaos 5 and they tend to jump around your walls if they're not um, placed um, if they leave cracks between them or places they can swift swing beside along them or <laughs> inside them or between them but if you place enough towers you shouldn't have a problem with them you should take them down fairly easy now what I do here is this is the place I'll be staying and mainly fighting because it's close to the the boss lane which spawns the more bosses which is this one on the bottom left of the map uh, because I have more defense units, I will also build some defenses that help me against um, 
assassins. This is something I don't do on the other maps because I don't have the extra defense units. But since I have them here, I will be doing that and showing you an easy way to to battle the assassins. And this is probably going to be the if you have if you find yourself having a lot of issues with assassins and not be able to get them off your back, probably this is going to be the best map for you to to complete your first Chaos 5. Now again I find 3 to 4 flamethrowers per lane should do the trick. I wouldn't put any more. If, if you feel that you're struggling you can put more and maybe put less of the defenses I'm gonna put here for the for the assassins. So I bring in my aura monk. And what I will do is place some auras um, next to the Skyguard Tower. So one here and then I will be using the gazer traps from the Huntress because what the gazer traps actually do is they immediately stun the assassins of your back so if that um, if that trap is active and can and can immediately proc it will stand that um, it will put that assassins of your back now you don't care about its power I mean the hard power of course is better but if you do not have a good relic on, on it don't don't fret too much on it um, what you want is actually make those traps help you uh, get the assassins of your back so don't fret, I mean, don't don't bother if you don't have a good relic on them. I think I use a really bad on them. Maybe I think a speed relic is an orb is, is best on them, because uh, what you want is to be able to um, reload them fast enough, so even if many assassins spawn, uh, they will trigger many times. So probably it's uh, best if you have um, a speed relic on them. I'm not sure what I'm using on them right now. Um, I, I wouldn't bother even um, putting any charge on them or anything. Just having just having them is enough. What you want them is 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 for them to trigger and take the assassins of your back, and the rest will. I mean, the, the sky guard and the auras will take the rest for you. Uh, as you see. They spawn on me, you go above the trap and they immediately go off your back. Now if you have a, a weapon with drenching strikes, if you have a drenching strike uh, weapon and, and a stun also, that helps a lot because it, um, it stuns them for 3 to 4 seconds, depending on how much you have, uh, how many upgrades you have on them and it will give that extra time for the, your defenses to take them down so it does help a lot now I think this is one of the maps that you shouldn't even worry about the bosses unless it's uh, a goblin siege roller uh, because of the extra defense units your defenses will bring down whichever boss spawns I mean even if it's a goblin siege roller, I don't know if it's if I have captured it on this video, but uh, in many occasions when I was doing Chaos 5, uh, I would get in this lane a siege roller spawning, and I would be dying uh, from the assassins in the top, in the bottom left corner. Uh, but I mean, the flamethrowers were enough to take it down, and my my walls would would hold for as much as needed even if I think one or two would break and uh, to take it down without me being there so 
this is definitely one of of the maps you should try first for your Chaos 5. Probably the easiest one. Now for me again it's best to put your first upgrades in your defenses. If you didn't know you can upgrade your defenses to 40 years. Uh, the first tier gives it a 50% boost of its current stats, the second 100%, the third one 150 which is 1 times 0.5 and the second one it's 200%. So that definitely helps a lot with that. As you can see you don't even need to repair um, uh, those traps, those geyser traps. The only thing you want them to do is get the assassins of your back. Your other defenses will do the job for you, the sky guard and the auras. When assassins spawn, you should always be careful not to be close to your crystal or other defenses if you do not have enough health on them because they will bring them down very fast. Now for health on your character, I mean as you see I do not have much health for the C5 standards. It's always good to have, I mean the, the highest health you have the better it is. But even with uh, low health, I don't think you'll have a problem uh, completing this map. Now, as you saw, I've placed two walls on the bottom crystal up those stairs. This I do because sometimes uh, a little skeletons spawn there and they immediately go for your crystal. So. Um, I mean, out, out of habit, I just, maybe I think I was doing it in Dungeons Defenders 1 and I'm still doing it. I, I don't know if it's still relevant or not, but I still do it. I mean, since you have the, the units to spare, uh, those two are the walls I'm talking about. I place them there and I put um, a flamethrower right next to it, just in case anything spawns and tries to go for that crystal. I mean, I've lost this map so many times in Dungeons Defenders 1 due to enemy spawning there so I think it's a habit doing it I don't know if it's if it still happens or not I mean you guys probably can tell me in the comments if it still happens and if this tip helps you so yeah Malthus spawning in this wave shouldn't be a problem of course you should always Especially in the early levels, in the first times you do Chaos 5, try to um, repair your walls, especially, or try to put some points into them, some upgrades. Now, once you once you'll be able to to complete this this map or any map with no trouble, no issues and and to do it many times <coughs> maybe you won't be you won't need to to go repairing on that uh, upper lane only I mean in my little waves I only go there on the final wave to put a few points in the in the walls because that's the final um, boss spawning there So I find it that I mean the defenses can hold it enough so you don't need to worry about that lane enough. Now again as I said it's a good idea to um, equip any better loot you have on your loot character. Um, I will have the link of the post of how to get better loot uh, in the description. This is, of course, I will say again, uh, before the final release. This is after the loot update. So if if anything has changed, uh, there's 
<laughs> I don't know, eye power is back in the game and you can check it again. Uh, this is the most relevant thing of how to get better loot at, the, at this time. Uh, so I will have that in the description if you want to find out how to progress faster and what you can do to, to ha have better loot drops for your characters and be able to go on higher and complete higher chaos tiers. Now in case you die out from the assassins, um, I probably do die a bit on this map so I can show you but uh, the place you spawn, well, we'll see it here, you spawn very close to the crystal so it's a good idea to not go directly for the shortest path which is like a diagonal directly to your defenses again to to the place we've set for clearing up the assassins um, well in this instance we didn't get many assassins spawned so uh, but still I mean I went directly for the walls for the defense to take them out and not for the crystal because if you pass near the crystal um, they do have a chance of uh, of damaging your crystal and uh, taking it down pretty fast and I mean it sucks if you're on like wave 4 or 5 and lose it for that if everything is working great for you and then you lose it just because you forgot that you shouldn't go around your crystal with a sensor back so what I do is I like I'm doing um, like a U course around the crystal and so you know I minimize the chance of that happening either the case it's a good idea if you die not you know not go straight for for the place you set or for any lane that a boss spawns but have in mind not to go past near the crystal with an assassin on your back or you have a high chance of uh, of them damaging your crystal and losing that wave and it would suck For me, I mean, this map generates a lot of mana, so <laughs> you'll get to a point that <laughs> you don't know what to firstly um, upgrade, but uh, I, I think the best thing is if you have the first two upgrades in your walls, then, then you can go for your offenses, and if you see that your walls are holding and they don't need any more upgrades, it's a good idea then to start upgrading your defenses, your the defenses, the towers that do damage, offensive defenses, as I like to call them, uh, or range defenses. I don't know what's the correct term. Because as long as your walls are holding, those are the towers that are gonna help you bring down the enemies faster. So it's always a good idea when you see your walls are holding to put those extra upgrades on the damaging defenses especially the ones that are close to the lanes that mobs are spawning but also a few on the ones that are um, looking at your walls and will be concentrating on the bosses when they spawn because those bosses are, are gonna stay a little bit longer on your walls and your walls will take the higher stress so the fastest you can take them down the easier it will be for your walls and again you minimize the chance of taking down the walls and going towards your crystal but I mean once you're double walling that's uh, when, when how, how enemies work right now if an ogre destroys one of your walls he will go for the other wall before he continues to your crystal that's the way they go 
So even just by having two walls, I mean, you kind of guarantee that that won't happen and you have that extra time of uh, of taking that enemy down. Now again, the final wave. You get one extra boss spawning. I prefer here to upgrade my defenses. Even if I could put an extra 150 mana on the walls, I think, and you'll see it on the on the outcome, that it was a better idea, a best idea to to put that upgrade, a 50 upgrade on the on the flamethrower and increase my damage output than actually increasing the health of a tower. I mean, it's probably the same thing, but for in, in scale of economy, I mean, it does the same thing and with less mana, so. Again, as I said, it's always best to um, equip something with a higher uh, selling price. As of now, it's it's better to you'll progress faster. I mean, you can do it with equipping a higher armor stat. But it might take you a few matches more to to reach that uh, end the ma to maximize your loot from that tier. But it is best to to choose loot according to the, its selling price. It's a better indication of its uh, eye power, or, or if um, an item is is best is better than the one you are currently have on you. Now you'll see, I'm I'm getting a siege roller here, and I think I'll probably won't help with his lane at all, I will let my defenses take it down or even if I come here it will be on the very end of the wave. It's a good idea when you get many bosses or any boss uh, in Chaos 5 or any Chaos you have assassins uh, to try to first to clear those assassins so when you try to traverse from one point to another I mean if you if you try to go through here with an assassin you do not have enough of space to clear out your crystal and not let it hit hit the crystal the assassins hit the crystal so it's a good idea first to take down the, um, the assassins be sure there are not any more of them left and then go for the boss otherwise you do jeopardize to lose that wave and i mean if you're down to two enemies you probably be banging your head on a wall if you do that. So it's always good to first deal with assassins and then go for the for the boss. I mean, unless of course you you've lost a wall or something, but and and it's going for your crystal. But even then, you you have enough time. So this is a spot we we made for dealing with the assassins. Two auras and three gazer traps. Gazer traps helping you get the assassins off your back and auras and the sky guard to do that damage to them to help you take them down faster. As you see, your defenses won't have any issue breaking down the 
the bosses, I mean they get down really fast even if you're not there due to the fact that this this map has allows you to build more towers so it does help a lot now since I make sure that there are not many any more assassins it's now safe to go for the goblin for the siege roller I know that my defenses even I mean even if they're ready to to break that's enough time for you to go there and and take down the assassins the, uh, the siege roller it doesn't matter if you lose a defense or two your goal is to complete the wave uh, we get a, a stuck Malthus there <laughs> so yeah there you go that's how you beat Chaos 5 alright guys I hope you had fun watching these videos and they will help you go through the Chaos 5 but, uh, obstacle <laughs> in your search for endgame. I hope you enjoyed this series. Let me know if you would like to see anything else Diddy Do related. Like and subscribe and I hope you have a good time. See you!